Welcome, this is NKBA and you're here for the Luxury Outdoor Kitchens Design Specify, Install and Use with Amy Gadia, who's a trade representative with Sub-Zero Wolf. And Amy, if you're there, we're ready to get started. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Debbie. Good morning and good afternoon to my North American designers from NKBA. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy lives and schedules to be with me today for about an hour. It is greatly appreciated. And I just wanted to mention a few things. Uh, first of all, I once I begin the program and begin the course, I cannot uh, answer any brand related questions. So we ask that you just just hold off on your questions until the end and then we can speak freely about any general or brand related questions that you may have. I am a trade representative for Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove Appliances and I represent the trade in the Maryland, DC and Virginia market. So I know there's plenty of people from all over the uh, nation here, um, but that's the market at, that I'm in. Uh, today we are going to be talking about luxury outdoor kitchens and this information is going to cover for all different regions of the United States. So once again, thank you for your time and we will begin the course. Now for NKBA, uh, as you know, you will be self-reporting uh, online, which is a very easy process. Uh, we just wanna mention here that the Sub-Zero Group is the sponsor for this program, which is provided by Hanley Wood. And this presentation is protected by the US and international copyright laws. Now, once we begin the course here, this is where I will not be able to discuss any brand related questions, but you will definitely learn a lot about luxury outdoor kitchens. This unit has been designed to educate all trade professionals and these options are going to be given for different design, layout, product specification, installation, and proper use. By understanding these topics, trade professionals will be in a better position to serve their clients and help create an upscale outdoor space that will greatly enhance a home's functionality, enjoyment, and value. The first learning objective is going to be describing design considerations and ideas for outdoor kitchen layout. Then we'll talk about the variety of different luxury products available for outdoor kitchens and how they differ from indoor products. We'll talk about installation, utility, and different requirements for luxury outdoor kitchen products. And lastly, we're going to explain the proper use and care for outdoor products for sustainability for their appearance and performance. As you can see here in this slide, outdoor kitchens are growing greatly in popularity. This is an AIA home design trend survey that was done. And this is showing here the interest in special function rooms as they increase inside and outside the home. Outdoor living is number one at the top of this design trend list. So as we see here, uh, we have a quote from kitchen designer and author of the kitchendesigner.org blog, Susan Sarah. And her quote is, emerging trends in outdoor kitchens include durability and environmentally friendly materials. Energy efficiency in appliances is ever progressing. Pinpoint cooking technology in appliances offers the same control as the best in-home appliances do. The style of outdoor kitchens now is a warm, soft, natural look, perhaps rustic, perhaps modern with clean lines, but connected to the style of the outdoor room in a natural, organic way. Shown here in Hanley Woods uh, Remodeling Magazine, uh, this slide will show you the costs versus the value. And from this report, this is saying that the outdoor space with a deck addition will have a 75% return on the investment. So imagine adding on a lot more amenities, which we'll be talking about throughout this course. We're going to start off with the first objective. So taking a look um, into the requirements for luxury outdoor kitchens, they may include cooking stations, food prep surfaces, 
cleaning stations, refrigeration, storage, shelter for the chef, and lighting. These are all definite considerations for that luxury outdoor kitchen. Now, when you're going to meet with your clients, they are interviewing you, but you are in turn interviewing them as well. You're trying to figure out what are their needs for their project. Everybody's different, as you know. And here are some guidelines for some initial questions to ask. Are you looking forward to entertaining large or small groups or something in between? How will you use the outdoor kitchen? What is the frequency of use and the type of cooking you'd like to plan for? Will there be one or two or more cooks at cooking in the grill area at the same time? Do you need separate cooking stations for prep and or meal stages? Now, for designers, you want to think about the design aspect of it and how it relates to the indoors and the outdoors as well for a luxury outdoor kitchen. What is the style of the house? What is the style of the garden? And that might even be part of the project, uh, new la landscaping as well. And what is the style of the whole outdoor living space? How are they going to use it? Think about those initial questions that you just asked. Now, in reference to outdoor kitchens, there's a lot of different products and different materials to consider to maintain a different style. But what people don't realize is that there's a lot of different UL rated for outdoor products available in the market. A lot of people always think about stainless steel, but in reference to outdoor kitchen cabinetry, it can be made of stone, stainless steel, brick, composite, and many more. There's a lot of different indoor cabinet lines that are offering outdoor cabinet lines as well. Outdoor kitchen counters to consider stone, tile, and composite, just to name a few. Now, it's very, very important to understand the best placement for this outdoor kitchen adjacent to the house, it's a preference for a blended indoor outdoor living space where people can go indoors to the outdoors back and forth very easily. And this is a huge consideration that needs to be taken in when you're talking about the heat and smoke. You must always consider that when you're talking about this being directly adjacent to the house. Now, if you have this outdoor living kitchen area some distance from the house in a separate section, gazebo, close to a sports area, near a pool, um, place to a maximized view area, then you're going to have to think about different considerations, such as you want to think about where you're located, where the home is located, and how those outside side climates and outdoor conditions are going to affect the placement of this luxury outdoor kitchen, such as exposure to wind, the proximity to traffic paths. Remember considering the indoor and outdoor traffic as well. The length of the gas supply line if you're going to be connecting to natural gas. Is it in a well ventilated area? and do not locate under overhead combustible surfaces. Lastly, <clears throat> the installation must always be level and flat. Now we're going to get into some different parts of the United States North American regions and just some different things to consider. I know everybody on here is from different parts of the United States and Canada. So as we go through these slides, just think about your area or where the home is located for your client. And we're gonna talk about these different climates and how they affect the outdoor kitchens. So when you talk about the South, it is all about the shade. 
It's all about where is the sun's exposure. So you want to consider that, you know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. When will the kitchen be used mostly? Uh, stainless steel can really become a very hot appliance when touched if the sun has been beating down on it. So consider that and also it could be in a shaded area or some somewhat semi enclosed as well. Now we move on to the West, and this is going to vary greatly from California to Colorado. And these outdoor kitchens, you might be saying that they are very well versed in California, but it doesn't matter what state, uh, luxury kitchens are definitely a key component of an outdoor space in a luxury home, no matter what state it is, including something like Colorado. And you want to keep in mind here that the different variations can go from very low humidity to very high humidity and very low climate temperatures to very high climate temperatures as well. Now, when you're talking about the eastern part of the United States, you definitely want to consider the size of the outdoor kitchen, meaning most of the time it might be a little bit smaller due to the shortness of the outdoor seasons. You want to also keep in mind that western and southern exposure of the sunlight and keep this in mind, but of course it will differ from Boston to Florida. Now, in the Midwest, severe weather in every direction. It could be very hot, it could be very cold, and using a lot of shelter from sun and heat exposure is vastly used in this section of the United States. Now, um, we're going to talk more about the socialization of the cooking area and how the grill should be close to the social action, but not too close. We're also going to talk about some different layouts. You want to make sure that the outdoor cook should not be isolated from the rest of the outdoor space and activity, especially while entertaining. We're going to talk about three different layouts. Shown here is the one plane where you're going to place the grill an auxiliary burner, warming drawer, refrigerator, all on one wall. The L shape. This is where you're going to have some cold and wet elements, and they might be placed on one plane, and the hot and cooking elements are going to be on a perpendicular plane to give you that L shape kitchen area. And then you have the last layout here, the U shape, which is going to provide all of the different stations in close and easy proximity. You always want to make sure that you're having everything very easily and readily available, but then you also have your guests ready to entertain easily in every area, no matter which layout that you're choosing. Now here are some mistakes that are very common that you would like to try to avoid in when you're designing a luxury outdoor kitchen. Insufficient counter space. Uh, these a lot of times are going to be, whether it's indoors or outdoors. Not enough ample lighting. A lot of uh, luxury built-in grills will have the lighting inside of the grill, which is a fantastic attribute to that grill, but consideration for natural lighting and track lighting, task lighting, just like indoors, bring it to the outdoors. You don't want the grill too far from the house or social areas. The seating area right in the line of smoke. It's very important to understand, remember, the wind and how when the grill is in use, where is the smoke going? You don't want that smoke going right into where people are seated. Now, specifying inexpensive grills that corrode and wear out, uh, short term, the investment might seem like it's worth it, but long term, it's definitely not worth it because you might have to have that client purchase more than one in a very short period of time. 
And lastly, the kitchen is too exposed. And that can be from the sun exposure. It's open to an area that's not good for other things going on indoors and outdoors. So just keep in mind again that placement. We're going to move on to the next objective. Now we're going to talk briefly about the cooking technologies with grilling. And it's important for you to understand that <clears throat> a grill harkens back to caves and campfires, while a high-end grill brings an ancient ritual, grilling meat and vegetables, decidedly into the present. Grilling is used almost all year round now by people. No matter what part of the nation that you're in, many people like to grill. It could be on a nightly basis. It could be just for entertaining, but this is a very important part of cooking and eating in the home for many families. Now this is showing you some infrared cooking and where the searing helps lock in juices and flavor. This is a very professional style of cooking. This is not achieved on all types of grills, but keep this in mind for that luxury kitchen with that luxury grill for the outdoors. And this is where you're going to get that professional cooking experience when you're trying to sear in those meats, juices, and flavor. Now there's uh, two basic styles for different grills. You can have one on the left shown here where it is freestanding on a cart, which makes it very easy to move around. It makes it easy for you to have it in different uh, parts of the uh, outdoor area. And then on the right, you have a built-in grill where you can build it in with those different materials and the storage and the cabinetry, the different countertop spaces, um, this is definitely something that comes in a variety of different sizes and it can be it, whether it's a small condo or a very large home these will apply for either type of location now you definitely have the option of an auxiliary burner mode and it's nice when you're trying to build that outdoor kitchen you want to also be able to create another area for cooking that might be needed where you're boiling something for large pots of water whether it's corn on the cob or a crab boil this might be something to consider now everybody knows you wind up having things outside, you're trying to juggle it, and it's cold. You're grilling, and then it's cold. You're trying to entertain. The warming drawer is definitely a great feature to consider for that outdoor luxury kitchen with temperatures ranging from about 80 degrees to 200 degrees, usually an interior capacity of around one and a half cubic feet and usually weighing about 100 pounds. Now there's different manufacturers for these warming drawers and these uh, different uh, feet and pounds and weight might differ, but having a warming drawer is definitely a luxury in the outdoor kitchen to keep everything warm while trying to juggle for your guests. Now refrigeration for the outdoors is definitely a great attribute and key component because food can be prepped and stored in advanced. Uh, these refrigeration products for the outdoor uh, locations are definitely going to be good for a varied temperature range and usually are made out of a heavy gauge stainless steel. A lot of them will have about a five and a half cubic feet weighing about 130 pounds. But imagine that you don't have to go indoors for the condiments and different products that will be used in the grilling situations when you're entertaining. An ice machine, having a high quality outdoor ice machine is fantastic because it can hold sometimes up to 25 pounds of ice and it can possibly make up to 50 pounds of ice per day. Stainless steel interior and exterior, filtered ice, and you know how much ice is usually used in those outdoor situations, so this is a great consideration. 
Now you always want to have storage and lack of storage space can make for an outdoor kitchen to be very awkward while in use. You don't want to have to run in for those grill brushes, spatulas, tongs, different storage is going to be able to accompany and store all of those necessary items that will make your lives and your clients lives easier. Now we're going to move on to the sinks and one of the best elements that someone can include in a luxury outdoor kitchen design is a sink. You think about the sink as being the number one utilized appliance whether it's indoors or outdoors based on cleaning your hands and cleaning dishes and prepping. These sinks can be made of stainless steel, cast iron, stone, and having a tall gooseneck style faucet is definitely a great feature in this type of location. Where it's, I'm going to point out here, if you're looking at this slide, there are two different sides of this sink and this is great for guests to wash their hands and or for the chef to prep and or clean off anything that is needed for the cooking area. Now some other possible features to consider when you're wanting to complement that luxury kitchen. This, of course, is not going to be for everybody, but these are different features to consider when enhancing that home for the indoors and the outdoors. A wine cabinet. You can have wine stored indoors, but it would be great to have wine and beverages stored outside as well, where it's readily accessible. A jacuzzi. Pizza ovens, these are becoming more and more popular. And these pizza ovens are manufactured by a variety of different brands, come in a variety of different sizes and styles. Uh, this is definitely something to consider as an additional attribute to that outdoor kitchen, not in replacement of a grill, but something to add on to that space. A social grill, so you might, want to have a social grill area and a working grill area. Just like in the indoor kitchens, a lot of um, more popular homes are seeing the two kitchens where you have that working kitchen and then you have the social entertaining kitchen. Same thing for the outdoors to consider. A hearth, as you see here, there's usually a lot of times you'll see a warming area, meaning that fireplace, that hearth, to keep the area warm if there's a cold evening or cold period of time, especially depending on where the home is located. A fire pit. A beverage tap. And I've seen everything from alcoholic to non-alcoholic beverages used here, but to have those beverage taps, it just makes it for very ease of use for dispensing different beverages for your guests, depending on how much you're entertaining and using this area. Dishwashers. There are several brands that manufacture outdoor rated dishwashers to be able to clean the dishes right there in that one space rather than bringing it indoors, definitely a luxury component. A movie theater, whether that's something as simple as a TV area or creating a large movie screen and movie seated area is definitely something cons to consider and discuss with your clients. Shower bathtub area, especially around a pool if your home that you're designing is near the beach so that you're not bringing in any sand, uh, showering off before or after uh, use of the pool, that is definitely something to consider as a complement to a luxury kitchen. Now we're going to move on to the third objective. Now with a large high-end grill, you want to consider that this is going to require a dedicated grounded circuit usually. You always wanna consider the different 
local code requirements where the home is located. The electrical source requirements are definitely key when you're talking about these newer, bigger, and more electrical powerful types of grills are being used. Uh, this is definitely not like using your old charcoal uh, little grill and some people still like to use that as well but if you are using a larger electrical sourced grill you definitely want to make sure that you are following local code requirements now the with in reference to the gas supply again you want to talk about the codes again you need to make sure about the local codes and the national fuel gas codes. And we're talking about whether you're going to have this connected to the natural gas versus propane. And many different grills are going to offer that. And many of them are also manufactured differently to connect to natural gas or to LP for liquid propane. So please make sure that you're understanding the difference for what is going to be used in the home and how it's going to be connected. Um, storage for those backup propane tanks should always be provided elsewhere. You can store them sometimes in the cart as shown below this grill here, but having another backup area for an extra tank, nobody ever wants to run out of that propane. So having a placement for at least one or two extra propane tanks is definitely something to consider for that luxury outdoor kitchen. And keep in mind those local and national codes when talking about electrical and gas supply. Now, in reference to enclosures, the structure should always be level and flat and able to support a minimum of 350 pounds. Now, of course, it's going to depend on all the different materials that are being used, whether it's stainless steel, stone, uh, the size, the weight of the different types of products. But you always want to make sure that all outdoor grills are in a built-in application and making sure you're using the right materials for support and for the structure. And that will be everything from the flooring to the cabinetry, storage, and countertops. Ventilation. This is such a fun topic, whether it's indoors or outdoors, and I'm sure you're all chuckling. Uh, ventilation is very, a very important factor if the grill outdoor area is enclosed or even semi-enclosed. If a roof is constructed over the outdoor kitchen, whether it's in a lanai, patio, arbor, or if the grill is very close to windows and doors of the home, a method of ventilation should definitely be specified. Now you can see here there is an enclosed ventilation hood that is hidden in this custom stone design. There are a variety of different brands that will offer a variety of different ventilation products. And as you know, for the indoor kitchen, you must choose the indoor cooking space first uh, and, and choose that indoor cooking area, what they're cooking on before you can determine the ventilation needs. Just like the outdoors, you must determine what they're cooking on first. The grill will have to be chosen to then determine the ventilation needs. Usually the manufacturer will also definitely let you know what will be required for that certain grill in reference to the blower and the CFM requirements. And as always, check your local codes. Now, in reference to those side burners, you will also have the option of a natural gas or propane LP connection. Usually in reference to the gas supply line, you're going to be using a three quarter inch rigid pipe. And the typical clearance at least 12 inches from a rotisserie side of grill or two inches from the other side of grill. You want to always follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Now, going back to that warming drawer, 
you definitely need a platform that's going to be able to support at least 200 pounds. And when you're thinking about what's going to be that platform, you can't only consider the warming drawer, the grill, and the items empty. You need to also consider it when there's food and or plates in, inside of those items as well. Of course, the warming drawer must be properly grounded and going back to those electrical requirements, they usually need a dedicated amp circuit as well. And you should be installing these with a qualified technician. Now with refrigeration, an outdoor refrigerator usually requires a separate data, dedicated circuit as well. You're going to have the typical outdoor high-end refrigerator is going to need to be built into some type of cabinet stone and usually not a stand along where it needs to be enclosed as shown here. Now the floor beneath the under counter unit must be the same level as the surrounding finished floor to allow for removal of the unit for servicing. Keep in mind too, some of these items may or may not require a water line depending on if there's a filter or if there's any type of use of water within this unit. Now moving on to the ice machines, they're going to definitely require the electricity and a water line and a way to drain the water out. There are different manufacturers that will make this a product available with a pump that is used for draining. Otherwise, you will need to have some form of a drain and definitely discuss this with your private contractor, plumber, electrician. A reverse osmosis system can be used provided that there is a constant water pressure as indicated by the manufacturer at all times. You will definitely get more details about these requirements from the manufacturers and from your local codes. Now we're going to move on to learning objective number four. And before we talk about the grill care and the different proper use and care of outdoor products, I want to talk to you briefly about how you might be thinking, why are we talking about the use and care? This is where it comes into place that taking care of the equipment is going to make that initial investment a very long-term investment. So I want to briefly talk about the use and care of these appliances. Stainless steel care, cleaning after the grill has cooled, using a mild abrasive pad with a mild stainless steel cleaner, always scrubbing in the direction of the grain of the stainless steel, and not using steel wool. Now these luxury products definitely come into a higher price point and you definitely want to have the, have the, have the client be able to use these appliances for many, many years. Simple steps like these are going to have those appliances being used much longer than they would normally. Taking care of the products internally and externally are key. Now, a lot of different times you're going to have a luxury grill that has indoor lighting, as you can see here. When replacing a halogen bulb, using a paper towel to handle it to keep oil on the fingers from touching the bulb is definitely necessary. Failure to do this will shorten the life of the bulb. And this goes to show you whether it's indoors or outdoors, it's the same rules for the best results for replacing those halogen bulbs to last longer. Now in reference to the warming drawer, you might want to open it slightly to let the heat going to be accessed and the steam escape. You definitely don't want to have any moisture kept in there for mold to be able to live and survive. So keeping that open sometimes, depending on what was in there, is going to be helpful. 
Uh, storing less than 75 pounds, some people will want to store plates and different things in here. So you want to make sure that it's not exceeding the weight and structure of the warming drawer. You definitely want to cool it off before cleaning. And using spray degreasers to clean is always helpful. Nothing abrasive. In reference to refrigeration care considerations, to bring out the natural luster of the stainless steel, lightly wiping the surface with a water dampened microfiber cloth, followed by a dry polishing chamois, will definitely keep these stainless steel products sparkling. Everybody always complains about the fingerprints. Keeping the microfiber cloths readily available, whether it's indoors or outdoors, is definitely going to be able to make that look and shine bright. Now, with ice machines, they definitely have a little bit more use and care recommendations where they need to be cleaned every six months on average, depending on usage, using a non-abrasive stainless steel cleaner and replacing a lot of the different products internally where you want to drain the ice, you want to use a cleaner, a sanitizer, and do the, doing this every six months is going to definitely be necessary. Now, uh, sometimes people will not be using this area on a reg regular basis during colder months, so shutting this system down is going to be key. Now, I, when we review these last learning objectives, I'm going to talk to you about how to think about the outdoor kitchens with your clients. We have just talked about different design considerations and ideas for layouts. We talked about the variety of different luxury products, including the everything from the grills to the refrigeration to ice makers. We also talked about the installation utility requirements and then proper use and care. Now, it's very important to understand that the outdoor kitchen is an area that you can think of as an extension of the client's home. Many people are staying in their homes longer and they want to add on possibly to those homes. They want to think about how they can use these homes for a longer period of time. And more and more people as they get older are also staying in their homes and they're bringing back family members, the extended family for entertaining. So how can they share that home and extend that home? The luxury outdoor kitchen is a great way to consider what to do with that home. You can even bring the indoor cabinetry to the outdoors. You can bring indoor materials to the outdoors to have that be an extended space. This is the new great room. This is the new extension of the home. All of these luxury outdoor kitchens are always going to add value to the home and make it more valuable if and when the home is going to go up to be resold at a future date. In conclusion, while property is for upscale homes are not always getting bigger, they are being utilized more wisely. They, if they do have the space for it, they can get bigger, adding on these luxury kitchen out in the outdoor spaces. Taking advantage, advantage of this for your clients is only going to make them want to live in the home longer and enjoy a new living space that you have created. It can enclose the kitchen and as shown here, you will see even a family room area with that hearth and fireplace, a dining area. This can be in any shape or size space. Again, whether it is that small condo or in an urban area or a large space that's out in the country or on a farm, the client is looking to you as the designer 
to give them these ideas and these inspirations for creating this new living area, this new space, a new extension of the home. Again, they want to be able to entertain and enjoy this on a regular basis and long term, it will definitely be a great investment value. I want to take this time to thank you again for being here with me today to listen to Luxury Outdoor Kitchen CEU. I wanted to also allow for any specific or general questions. Now that the course is complete, anyone is welcome to ask any questions related to this course, whether it be specific with the brands or anything in general. And I thank you very much for your time. This has been great, Amy. Thank you so much. Um, so I do see some questions coming in. So if any of you out there have further questions, please keep them coming um, so that all of you can understand what the questions are. I'll read them and then uh, Amy will provide an answer. So uh, Karen is asking, if you put an arbor over the grill, do you still need to have a hood over the cooking surface? Thank you for those questions. And I did um, allow for this extra time at the end so that I'm very respectful of your time being uh, an hour or less. So thank you. Uh, yes, it would be recommended for to have a ventilation product uh, or, or hood of some kind in that area. Um, it, it also depends on the usage of the grill and how often it's being used, um, how close in proximity to the home. Uh, so when it's even under an arbor, semi-enclosed, ventilation is recommended. It may not always be absolutely readily available and ease of installation in that area, but it would be a recommendation. It's usually not a code. Okay, and then to um, add on to that question, is there a certain height that the arbor should be? Yes, um, that's a great question. So in reference to the height, just like indoors, uh, ventilation products are typically uh, recommended 30 to 36 inches above a cooking surface. You can keep in mind um, that, but go typically a little bit higher, uh, depending on the heights of the homeowners and, of course, depending on the design of the home. But there is nothing definitive as far as a code regulation. Those are going to be recommendations. Okay, great. Thank you. And then another question. Do you know of a mid-level stainless steel brand that can be used? Okay, so in reference to storage or drawers or in, in reference to cabinetry, for what product? Yeah, I don't see that here at the okay. moment. Okay. Well, in reference to stainless steel in general, a lot of the manufacturers are going to offer uh, different stainless steel products with to accompany their grills and cooking appliances. And um, I know Debbie with NKBA did mention uh, in the next week or two, I think Danver is going to be uh, talking about uh, CEU, and I believe they're a great uh, product line for stainless steel storage products as well. Okay, so the question came up about the cabinetry as well as the freestanding modular yes. regarding the stainless steel. Okay, um, so there is a variety of different price points for cabinetry, and that will not always be stainless steel. There's a lot of different UL rated uh, products that will look like cabinetry. And if, if anybody wants uh, those specific recommendations for different cabinet lines, uh, please send Debbie a private message and I'll be happy to um, offer that um, and, and give that information. Great. And then there is another question here. So someone's asking if you live in an area that has many days of winds of 15 miles per hour, how do you determine the placement of the cooking surface? Great question. Uh, my first recommendation would definitely be, if possible, to enclose that area. Whether it's semi-enclosed or enclosed, you can also have uh, retractable, uh, you know, sliding doors. Um, if you can do that, and then you have the indoor type of uh, ventilation product uh, in, enclosed in that area. 
If you're not able to enclose, then you definitely need to make sure uh, that you're considering where the winds are going to be coming from typically and making sure the placement of the grill is taken into consideration while cooking because just like we discussed in that slide you don't want to have the smoke blowing right into somebody's face while they're sitting there trying to eat um, but typically in a windy uh, area i don't know if it's chicago or not but um, you definitely want to try to consider something more enclosed or semi-enclosed Great. Okay. So we do have another question here. Let me, it's, I'll read it. Customers often just want to use their indoor appliances like under counter refrigerators, ice makers, or freezers outside. I know this is not advisable, especially in the Northeast where we have huge weather fluctuations. How can we respond to this with clients? Great question. Absolutely. Uh, typically, they probably want to use those products because they're uh, less money. And if they want to have the proper products being used in the proper climates, they're going to have to make that investment. Just like they're, you, you need to show them what the manufacturers will say. You need to show them that the longevity and the quality of the product is going to be able to withstand different climates as long as it's UL rated for the outdoor climates. They are manufactured differently uh, from an indoor product versus an outdoor product. Um, and that's for all different brands. So it is definitely important to show that information from a manufacturer, uh, even the different grades of stainless steel and how they're manufactured indoor versus outdoor um, is key. Uh, typically, they want to just try to save money, but long term, they'll be spending more. Okay, and then another climate question, outdoor wear in coastal areas and suggestions for saving from the salt air. Yes, that is a key factor when you're trying to think about how to protect these products. Uh, number one, first thing again, if you can enclose the area or semi-enclose it, that is going to be number one. Uh, number two, making sure you have uh, different types of uh, tarps, covers, uh, different uh, coverings for your different appliances in those outdoor related climates um, after they're done being used. Obviously, I'm not talking about while in use, but when they're not in use to have them properly covered is just going to make them last longer because there's not a lot you can do about that salty air and living in those beautiful climates. Uh, just making sure you have the proper covering um, whether it be for each initial, each individual appliance and or having that area enclosed or semi-enclosed. Okay, and then we're getting back to, is there recommendation um, or recommended direction for the grill and where it should be placed? Should it be facing south? Well, that is definitely going to depend on the sun exposure um, I would look at the sun exposure first, you know, where you have that sun um, and that area in the home. Uh, you definitely, you know, when you think about the, the time of day when the grill's being used, so you want to consider, you know, between four and seven, eight o'clock before the sun goes down where are you going to put that grill and where is that sun? So that is really going to be your number one key component for that exposure. When considering the winds, um, that is going to, to, to depend again on the where the home is located and the wind exposure. You might wanna consider enclosing again. I know I keep saying that, but um, the number one key though is that sun exposure. When you have that sun beating down on the stainless steel appliances, it does not make for fun use when you're trying to use these outdoor kitchen appliances and they're too hot to touch. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, do we have any other questions out there? I know some of you have been asking for information, but right now we're answering questions and I'll definitely uh, get the information to you. So i um, looking for a few more questions. So feel free to put that into the chat. Amy's here for about another 10 minutes. So 
send your burning questions right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if um, if anybody needs any more specific uh, recommendations, uh, whether it be the outdoor appliance brands, outdoor uh, brands for cabinetry, uh, just send Debbie um, a private message and I'll, I'm happy to share that information with you. Uh, there's a lot of great resources and for many of you, uh, a lot of times you're trying to extend, uh, you know, your indoor design creativity to the outdoors and there's so much you can do to create that outdoor living space with your, with your creativity and talents that you have from the indoors to the outdoors. Okay, great. I, I do have a couple of requests for you, Amy. I'm at the moment not seeing any further questions, um, but we'll wait another minute or two here if that's okay with you. Happy to share. Absolutely. I just, I just like to leave some, uh, some time at the end for some questions. Okay. Okay, here's one. Do designers like to work with landscape architects uh, on these types of designs? That is a fantastic question. Yes, they do. Um, partnering with landscape architects is definitely something to consider. Um, and that can also help your business um, for both of you. Uh, if you want to try to partner with a landscape architect, uh, great referral business that goes uh, both ways. Uh, the landscape architect might be able to refer business to you and you can refer to them. And then you can work on projects together because the landscape architect and you as a certified kitchen and bath designer have very different talents and bringing those talents together will make for an amazing project. I highly recommend that. Great, great answer. Uh, then there's another question here about any provisions required to prepare appliances for winter. Yes. Yes, um, the main one to consider is if there's anything with the ice maker water usage um, when you're going to winterize uh, that product. There are typically uh, manufacturers guidelines and recommendations as far as draining the ice and making sure if you're, uh, especially like if you're in a snowbird situation where you're only at the home for parts of the year, uh, you definitely want to make sure it's completely, you know, drained and dry so it doesn't, you know, cause mold. A lot of uh, these different outdoor products will uh, offer those winterization guidelines along with even the countertops, um, depending on what type of countertop you're using as far as sealing it. Um, and preparing it for uh, winterization and covering it. And so that is key. So when you're thinking about those winterization uh, processes, it's not going to be just the appliances. It will be for all different materials and definitely following those manufacturer's guidelines will be key. Okay, great. So there's a couple questions here. I'll just roll through them. Um, I know NKBA has brochures with standards for indoor and out, indoor kitchens and bathrooms. Is there one out there in the market for outdoor kitchens? Well, let me just answer to that, uh, Karen. Um, we are in the process of updating our guidelines that will include outdoor kitchens, but maybe Amy knows a little bit more information on that. As far as um, outdoor guidelines, um, nothing with NKBA at this time, um, but if you want to get more involved with the uh, landscape architect side of it, there's definitely a lot more guidelines for those outdoor kitchens. Um, there's also an organization um, that is, uh, it's called LACES, L-A-C-E-S dot org. Um, that is an organization that certifies landscape architects and you might be able to find some more resources via that website. So www.laces, L-A-C-E-S dot org, which is uh, Landscape Architect Continuing Education. Okay, great. Um, there's a sort of another question here, but I'll read it. When I'm searching the codes, oops, it just jumped, excuse me. When I'm searching the codes, is there a specific category within the codes to see, search out, excuse me, wouldn't this type of design be fairly new? 
Um, what type of design would be new? I'm not understanding that. I, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking that they're talking about outdoor kitchen design. Oh, okay. Um, no, so that's not um, new at all. It's really going to be more about the codes for electrical and plumbing requirements um, as far as a lot of times it will um, say, you know, when using um, as far as like the manufacturers are going to give you different uh, requirements as far as a dedicated circuit, what amp and so on. But then when you're talking through the process for the design, seeking out the local codes for as far as like there will be an outdoor area you, typically for electrical and plumbing requirements as well. Okay, and then this person is asking, she's not sure if she missed it, but has anyone heard about washing the dishes, cooking utensils? Is there a dishwasher outside or not? Oh, sure. Absolutely, there is. Um, there's several brands that uh, will offer an outdoor uh, dishwasher. Um, we represent a brand called ASKO, A-S-K-O. That is the brand that we represent for an outdoor kitchen um, dishwasher. Again, it is manufactured for the outdoors only. So it is UL rated, manufactured, outdoor only, especially how it's uh, manufactured in internally and externally. So make sure it's uh, definitely going to be an outdoor rated product. But those dishwashers are fantastic for that luxury kitchen. Okay, and here's another great question. Are there any uh, live-in or universal design guides for outdoor kitchens as well? I have personally not seen the universal guidelines um, for the outdoor kitchens, but I have been told by different people that I work with that design for those types of design for outdoor kitchens will utilize the same requirements as the indoor kitchens. So you're going to keep in mind the same, you know, height requirements for the countertops, the same height requirements for uh, the appliances, uh, placement of as far as uh, having flat surfaces so that you're uh, able to get around in a mobility device, making sure that there's, you know, no corners, um, the, the proper lighting. So I would, I would definitely go along with the universal design indoor applications to take it right to the outdoors. Oh, that's a great answer to that. I, I'm, I've actually um, have some notes here, everybody, to um, find out if it might be possible for NKBA before our guidelines uh, are updated to see if we can put some brochures out there about those two topics, the outdoor kitchen guidelines as well as any type of universal design information. Um, so um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, we have another minute or two for questions if anyone has one. Um, I'd be happy, we would be happy, or I should say Amy would be happy to answer. <laughs> um, but everyone is saying thank you so much, a Amy. This has been great. Um, they really appreciate all the information that you've shared today. I do have several people, Amy, that are looking for um, information, and I will send that along to you as well. Fantastic. Wanna, yeah, any, yeah, anything that um, anyone needs, I am happy to help. Okay, well, thank you so much, Amy, for being here today uh, and sharing your time and expertise with us. And I do hope that you might decide to come back in 2020. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for being with us as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it was a wonderful time. Enjoy your day, everybody.